Hey folks, this is going to be a quick little demonstration video of the Caswell um, Zinc and Copycat electroplating kit that a friend and I uh, basically went in halves on. It's uh, got multiple parts here. Um, you've got a degreaser tank, you've got an acid slash pickling tank, you've got your plating tank, and then you've got your chromate tank. Um, each one of these stages has its own um, rinse bucket. So this is a rinse bucket for degreaser because it's in a degreaser. This is the acid rinse for acid. This is the plating rinse for plating. And then there's the chromate rinse for the, the final part, which is the chromate. And the chromate's what gives it, turns it from the, the silver to the almost, uh, the gold iridescent. And I'll show a demonstration of that here in a minute. Um, first off is the degreasing tank. This needs to be heated to between 160 and 190 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, bought this pretty inexpensive controller off of uh, Amazon and I'm thinking it was right around 20 bucks for the the box and the controller the controller comes by itself so you got to get a project box to mount it on uh, it goes to it's got a, a temperature probe right here that uh, comes around to the back and then it's got a heating unit there that is uh, the heating unit it's a 1500 watt it's uh, the type of heater that goes in a uh, a water heater that you'd have on say like an RV so it's a real small water heater um, it works really well it keeps the temperature right where I need it um, had a few little issues with this sensor kind of reading wrong but other than that um, it's it's working pretty good I'd say um, I've got some parts sitting in here that I've just uh, I ran through a wire wheel and uh, completely stripped off all the rust, all the old zinc coating, all that stuff. And so now they're just sitting here ready for me to plate them. Um, the second step to the process is you do a real quick dunk in the acid pickling bath. Uh, this is made of distilled water and muriatic acid. And distilled water, by the way, is what you use in this entire setup. Um, but this is a very mild acid solution of muriatic acid which you can get at Home Depot or anywhere and distilled water. Um, the parts just get a quick dunk in there and then they move on to the plating. So here is the plating tank. It has a, uh, a filter like an aquarium filter for circulating. It's got your two zinc anode, anodes, cathodes, I forget what you call them when you're doing plating. Uh, one on each side. Those are connected together to a wire and then you've got th this part here where you hang your parts from and this has got a wire on the end of it too as you can see and normally these would go to a power supply that's right here but the something happened with the power supply and I'm trying to work with the manufacturer on getting some kind of replacement part and trying to fix it so in the meantime I, I did some reading and saw that you can actually use D batteries to plate small things like individual bolts so bought some D batteries and uh, Pretty amazed to see that, yeah, you can plate bolts individually and it works just great. Um, also back here is the heater. Um, this is a pretty simple heater element. It's normally from a uh, like a coffee mug heater that I got off Amazon. Um, and of course all this stuff you got to be real careful with. Um, it's clamped up here so you don't get your electrode or your, your wiring down in your, your tank or anything. Um, this tank needs to be around 110 degrees Fahrenheit and this one doesn't have the fancy digital controller this one is just kind of manual so I've got a uh, infrared temperature sensor so just occasionally you got to check it if it starts to drop down below 110 plug this in for a couple minutes and it'll be good to go um, the final tank is the chromating tank right here it is in a uh, as you can see a crock pot seems to work just great for what we need to do this needs to be around 80 degrees Fahrenheit and I try and keep it anywhere from 80 up to 90 right now it's on 84 so I went ahead and just now turned it back uh, onto low so I'll let that get up a couple degrees close to 90 and then I'll go ahead and turn it off again so I'm gonna do a quick plating real quick um, here's a part that I've had ready so it's already been soaking in the degreaser for about 15 minutes first thing I'm gonna do Take it to the rinse tank. This is the de the degrease rinse tank. Dip it a few times, and actually, let me put my gloves on. Normally, I would have gloves on, which you should for this, because you're dealing with acids and other thing, and uh, a respirator. 
I'm only not using the respirator right now because obviously you wouldn't be able to hear me if I had my respirator on. But uh, normally I keep it on pretty much the entire time I'm doing any of this. Uh, pretty nice little 3M respirator that I like to use. All right, get my gloves on. I do have safety glasses on. Just don't have the respirator for right now. So let me show you how this works. Okay, first off, we've already had them degreasing. We're gonna put this down here, do the rinse, give it a couple dips. Try not to drop it down the tank. All right, so we're good there. Now you wanna dip it in the acid pickling bath and doesn't take long, about five seconds. Take it out. This is the acid rinse tank. Now next part is gonna be the plating. So what I do is bring it over. My battery is already hooked up here. One side it goes to the, uh, the anodizing plates and one side goes to this copper pipe here. So what I usually do is I take it and hang it over to the side at first so I can get the height of just how I want it. Go ahead and twist that sucker on there. And you want it to fit all the way down the tank, so that's what I'm looking at here. So go ahead and bring it over. And the electroplating process begins. It happens pretty quickly. You can see the, the fizzing. That is, uh, means it's doing its thing. It is currently plating right now. That's what all the bubbles do. So basically uh, what's happening is the, the zinc molecules are actually coming off of the plates, traveling through the, the solution, and attaching themselves onto the bulk right now. So I don't know if you can really see with the color, but it's, uh, it's already pretty quickly turned very silver. That's not a very thick coating, so we want to go a little thicker. I'm going to angle the bolt just a little bit using my hand, which I normally try not to do. Okay, let that plate for just a second. And depending on the part, it can take anywhere from three or four minutes up to 15 minutes. You really don't want to go any longer than that. Sorry, a little thirsty there. All right, and one thing you want to do as it's plating, after it's been there for a few minutes, you want to lift it up and actually spin the bolt. The reason I'm doing this is because if you don't do that, you will have a mark that doesn't get plated from where this wire was. So, spun it back some, go ahead and dip it back down, and we'll finish plating. And as it starts to, as it finishes plating, you can tell because it'll fizz a lot less. Like right now, it's fizzing a lot less. Uh, just kind of that end there is the only thing still fizzing. Give it just another minute here. Okay, that's kind of quick. It could probably use a couple more minutes, but it'll be fine like that. So, go ahead and call this one done. Slide it off the pipe. It goes into the uh, plating rinse tank. All these are nice and labeled, so you can kind of keep everything separate here. Give it a good rinse, and before it goes into the chromating tank, it needs a quick dip in the acid bath again. So, I'm gonna do five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. We do a rinse. And then this next part is going to be something that I kind of just started doing because I noticed the chromate doesn't always stick real well. So what I've been doing is dipping it in uh, rubbing alcohol, 90% uh, rubbing alcohol, immediately before. It's getting a little hot there. Immediately before I do the chromating. So this right here is just 90% rubbing alcohol. So, dip that in there just a second. I use the air here to just kind of blast that off. So, when I put it in there, it's pretty dry and the chromating will be able to go to the whole part. All right. 
Now, this is a very quick process. All you need to do is dip it down into the tank. If I can get this off here. There we go. And it takes about 50 seconds. And the whole time it's doing that, you want to move it around so it's constantly. And what it is it's it's from what I've been told it's it it's some kind of almost like an acid. It creates the chromate creates an oxidation layer that actually protects the zinc. So now you've got the zinc protecting the metal and the chromate protecting the zinc. So it just gives you an extra level of uh, protection. So I'm sitting there and I'm counting in my head right now. It's about 50 seconds. Be good to go. Tank's good. Go ahead and turn this back off. Okay, pull it out, take a look. Give it about another 10 seconds. Okay, and we are good to go. I'm going to quickly dip it in the chromate rinse. One dip. Dip it too much and you can actually wash some of it off. And now I'm going to bring it over here to hung and to hang and dry. So as you can see, I've already got a couple of bolts here. And as they're drying, you can't see the iridescence really well. But here's some bolts that I did earlier where you can really see the, uh, it's the gold and there's also a green and kind of a reddish purplish color on the bolts. It's uh, really cool, the uh, effect that it gives on them. So yeah, that's pretty much it, LOL. Um, it's kind of a pain, but uh, it's the type of thing I enjoy, so i um, been having a lot of fun with it. If you have any questions about the kit, I'd be happy to answer them. Just post them down in the comment section. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.